testing this double Hall effect sensor speedometer. We've got a PCB in there that's holding it. Kind of hard to see, but come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Way down in there, you can see U1. That's a little IC chip that has two Hall effect sensors on it. Inside this small 3D printed plastic piece, I have six magnets going north, south, north, south, north, south. And the way this Hall effect sensor works is that it latches. So it sees a north, it'll latch high, sees a south, it latches low. And since there are two of them, offset by one and a half millimeters, when this uh, drive shaft spins, that's what this uh, plastic part is attached to with the magnets in it, it creates these pulses. So I have one of them set to an interrupt on an ESP32 here. And when that interrupt is fired, it looks at the state of the other Hall effect sensor, and that gives you a sense of the direction. And here I have it wired up to an oscilloscope to show that really nicely. So right now you can see one of them is high and one is low. And I'm just going to start turning the wheels. So you can see that's, that's spinning there. The magnets are going by the Hall effect sensor. And here's what it looks like on an oscilloscope. You can see that blue channel 2 here is going high before channel 1. So let's say I have my interrupt on channel 1. When that interrupt is fired, I look at the state of channel two and I see that it's high. So I know it's going forward. Now let's go backwards. So again, let's say that interrupt on channel one, which is yellow, and that interrupt fires, and you see the state of channel two, blue, is low. We know we're going backwards. Backwards, forward. One issue that I didn't foresee, um, but is very clear in hindsight, is that the six magnets that I have in this 3D printed part are not perfectly evenly spaced. And so you can kind of see, even at constant speed, you'll see some vibration of those. Because each time you see it go high, then low, then high, then low, that's dependent on the actual dimensions of this 3D printed part. And the way I'm currently calculating speed is by looking at the time between two rising edges. And so every, you know, averaged over three measurements, that will be very accurate, but every single measurement uh, will have some, some offset in it. And so I may need to, I was hoping to get more frequent updates by having those three different measurements per revolution, but that may come at the cost of some immediate accuracy. But I can do some sort of moving average, some, some sort of average to filter out that noise. Let me know what you think or what the best solution for that would be. Thanks.